Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today's exciting day. We're going to be doing our latest stashing with Stephanie pattern. It's called Ladies Chain. It's inspired by this month's collection that we're featuring, Dance Moves by Katie Pasquini Massapust. And it is gorgeous. It is a lot of really saturated colors, a lot of fun designs that are all inspired by different dances. And this is a block that we're going to be making. It's pretty simple. We tend to alternate between easy and a little bit challenging. So last month was a little bit challenging. This month we're going to go with some simple strip piecing and some nice plain background to really help all these colors pop. You can see how they just, just stand out beautifully against that white and just let them shine. And with the different size squares in it, they're going to be able to be seen in different ways as well. We're going to be able to see them really big and bold and in all their glory, as well as just little pops of color where we can see that great saturation. Now, if you're not a member of Stashing with Stephanie yet, we're going to tell you a little bit about it before we get into today's tutorial. It is a subscription club that we run where you get 10 fat quarters for $29.99 a month plus shipping. We also give you a free pattern, which you can get today's pattern for free. And you get access to our previous Stashing with Stephanie patterns as well, which is now a $252 value. And you can download those on our website. Once you join, we'll send you a coupon code for that. You get a coupon code to get my book, Fat Quarter Workshop, which features our 10 most popular Stashing with Stephanie patterns at, that are no longer available on the website, plus two exclusive Fat Quarter patterns. So it's great if you are, you know, you've got a stash. And let's face it, we all got a little bit of a stash. And so you can really make that, put that to use by doing some quilts that look stunning, look really fun, but really are not that challenging or that too complicated or time consuming to get together. All right. The other thing that's super awesome about it is you get first dibs on all this fabric. So the last several months, we have been completely selling out of all the fabric that we use for Stashing with Stephanie. And our subscription club members get their bundle first, and then they also get first access to get additional fabrics for it. That way they can get, if they want to get a finishing kit, which has everything they need to complete their bundle. So they get all the fabrics for that line, plus your background fabric and binding. So you can do the project that we feature or you just want to get some extra stuff because you have another thing in mind for it, you can do that. Use your coupon code before everybody else. And we also are only adding a specific number of people every month because we want to make sure that we've got enough fabric to get all the bundles and so that a good number of our subscribers are able to get the extra fabric if they want it to do that month's project. All right, so that's enough about Stash with Stephanie. You can learn more about it on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Now let's take a look at these fabrics. I really love this month's collection because it's incredibly bright and fun. And then we're using a nice white print to sort of give the eye a place to rest and let all the prints stand out on their own. We're going to take a little closer look from our overhead camera so we can take, get really just take it in and have some fun with this. So all the fabric names have different dance names to go with them, which makes sense. First up, we've got Rumba. We've got this in a couple of different colorways. And Twirling, this has a lot of really big prints. You can see it really prettily right here. It really stands out, it's really fun. This one is Tango. This is gonna come up in a couple of different colorways. It's really, it really goes kind of all over the place. This one is Salsa. It comes in a couple of different colorways. It's really fun, very essential print. Then we have Jive, some more of the Rumba, and then of course we have to have a square dance. And then we get through the others in different colorways here. Uh, we're back to some of the others. This one is, uh, we haven't seen before, this one is Jazz. And that one also, here's another one of the square dance ones. This one has a lot of the colors pulled into it. This one's really pretty. And there is that Jazz again back to jive, and then back to the beginning. So when I was designing with this month's collection, there isn't a true neutral in it. So I wanted to make sure we pulled in a nice solid to give the eye a place to rest because that's what you need in order to make all these prints stand out. You need a place to sort of be the background. And so we're doing that with a white print. And last month's pattern was super 
well, not super hard, but it was a little bit more challenging. So this month we're gonna take a step back, we're gonna do some easy strip piecing so that we can get these together and get a really nice scrappy look to it. So let's get started. So we're doing a lot of strip piecing for this month's quilt. It's a really easy way to do your quilts quickly because what you're gonna do is sew everything together first and then cut it apart, which is a lot more efficient than cutting a lot of little pieces and then sewing them together. But one of the things that it's going to mention is that you're going to have to cut your background strips apart at the fold. And that's because we're working with fat quarters, which are about 21 inches, give or take, um, usually a little bit more. And this with a fabric is going to be about 44 inches, 42 to 44. So all you're going to do is you're just going to take your scissors, and you're going to slice it off right at the top. So that way we can take one strip and turn it into two. Now strip piecing is going to be the same whether you're putting two or three strips together, which is all you're going to be doing for this pattern. I, for the demonstration, I'm going to show you how I do it with the one that has three strips. Uh, and then you just know that you'll just have to do two for a couple of the other units that we're creating. And so all you have to do, I've got these laid. I'm just gonna do right sides together, one side at a time. What I like to do is line up my salvage edges so that they're on the same side. That way I can cut off at the end here. One thing to know when you're doing our patterns is that we base it on 21 inches of usable width from where this salvage ends to where the tip is. And when you're getting fat quarters from us, we make sure that you've got that much. Um, but we ask that you probably shouldn't pre-wash because sometimes fabrics can shrink a little, you might not have enough and you may need to increase the amount of fat quarters you're using if you're doing that. But it's always good to make sure you keep your salvages together as if I were to switch this around, then I might not end up with 21 inches of usable width and I might not be able to get as many pieces as I need when I'm sewing this together. All right, so now what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna just stitch a quarter inch seam all the way down the side of this. It goes really fast and really quick. All right, so I've got the edge of my presser foot here lined up with the edge of my fabric and I'm just sewing down. And I know some people get a little crazy with pinning this, I never do. What I do is I just lift it up, I make sure that my edges are in line, and then what I do is I put my finger on top of the fabric as far back as my sewing machine throw will allow. And then I just sew until my finger comes up to where I can't hold on to it anymore. And then I just repeat that process, making sure that I keep everything nice and in line as I go. Now to save even more time, if you're doing this for the actual quilt, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your next two strips together, you're gonna lift up your presser foot, slide it right underneath, and then just keep on sewing. And you'll be able to go ahead and keep going and get all of your units sewn together for one particular type all at once. It saves a ton of time, saves some thread, and it will make this quilt go even faster. Now we could press at this point, but I'm gonna wait and press it all at once. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna grab my extra piece and I'm gonna put that right sides together. It's a, it's a solid, so it doesn't matter super, it's not like a true right or wrong, but if you're using a print, you definitely wanna make sure that is going on. So now I'm just gonna sew down that side as well. So you can chain piece that second side as well. It makes everything go a lot faster. I always press my seams open. It really makes a huge, huge difference in how flat my final quilt is and in what I can do with quilting. We've got some ruler work planned for this one, so that's gonna be really important. To do that, I just open the seam up with my fingers and keep about three fingers down ahead of the iron, and then just put the nose of that iron straight down the seam. Now, when you've got strip piece like this, it sometimes is good to kind of angle that iron down just a smidge that way you're not going to be pressing the other seam while you're pressing one uh, seam open. Let's do the other side. And here I'm really angling that because I don't want to, you know, get over this seam because I already worked hard to press that the right way and I don't want it going the wrong way. Once I finish pressing from one side, the wrong side, I always flip it over and then I'm just going to take the iron and go over that really well over those seams. Get everything nice and flat and straight. I also find, especially when you're strip piecing, by pressing the seams open, you're less likely to get that curve that sometimes happens and where everything just kind of gets off because you're doing this constantly with the iron and it's just pressing everything on a curve instead of a nice straight flat seam. And then you're able to get straighter 
units when we cut them apart, which we're doing next. So all the measurements for this are going to be in the pattern that you can download on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. It's called Ladies Chain, and you can get that all there. So what you're gonna do next is we've gotta cut this down so that we can create the different units that are gonna make up our block for today's uh, pattern. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna line this up so that way I've got inch marks even with my strip piecing. Now occasionally, due to our, even though we have our best efforts, things will get off a little bit and you'll have to uh, make that work but you always want to make sure that you've got inch marks in line with that piecing because that's what's going to make everything square when you sew your units together so what I'm going to do here is I'm lining it up so that the measurement I need to cut to is past where that selvage begins because we don't want to use that and then once I'm happy with where everything is I'm going to go ahead and give that a cut and then for this first unit only, what I'm gonna do is square that up. So I'm flipping that around, and now I'm lining it up so that the measurement I need to trim to is exactly even with the cut edge. I still have my pieces even here. And another thing to check is at this point, we should be at about two inches in between here. And if you're not, if you're way over or way under, something didn't go right with your pressing or your quarter inch seam. So you need to figure out which one of those it is. You could also could have cut wrong to start with. But if it's not right now, if you're not seeing two inches in between here, you need to stop, you need to figure out what went wrong and fix it or your whole quilt isn't gonna to come together correctly. All right, so now that I'm happy with that, go ahead, give a trim. And then from now on, you can just slide down. You can line it up so that your measurement you need to cut to is even with your cut edge. You've got your inch lines on the ruler even there, and we're gonna give it a trim. Now, I'm gonna show you how to fix it if it gets off. I'm going to, deliberately cut off and you probably are never going to get this far off this is this is significant but it's so you guys can see it really clearly on camera so let's say this happens i'm way far off um, you would not want to line it up with the edge because you can see that we are nowhere near where where we should be here and you're going to have a really hard time lining up and keeping that square so what you're going to do is you're basically just going to square it up again so what you do is you ignore what's happening on your cut edge and you're going to again just line up those inches with your seam lines make sure you got enough room so that we've got fabric that will fill all the way to the edge we need to cut to that measurement we're going to give it a trim and then just like that first piece you're going to flip it around and you're going to recut. Now, depending on how straight you press your seams and how straight you cut your fabric, you might be doing this a little bit more often, but you should be just fine. You should be able to get enough of what you need from what you have and be able to make it work. All right, so that's how you fix it. If it gets a little off, don't worry, it happens to the best of us. So we're going to have three different types of units that we're going to sew together and one that's just going to be a square that's a specific size. So what we did is we just made this one. This is the one that I did on camera. These are another unit that you'll make. You see they're all the same. They just, in this case, are orientated differently. But in this one, you're just gonna have a longer strip of your background and a shorter strip of your fat quarter. And in this one, it is going to be a longer strip of your fat quarter and a shorter strip of your background. And it's all the same way. Instead of having three to strip piece, you're just gonna have one or two to strip piece with one seam, and you're just gonna be cutting it to different widths. So just pay attention in the pattern. These are all really clearly marked. We have different unit names for them. So that way you can clearly see what you're supposed to make, how many you need in order to make the pattern for whatever size it is that you are going to make. All right, so at this point, what we need to do is we need to get these sewn together to create the different corners of our block. We're gonna have quadrants that we sew together. And this is really incredibly simple. I mean, I got all of my stuff sewed together, just sewing maybe for an hour or two with my daughter next to me the whole time. So it's, and she's six, so she needs some, you know, supervision while she's doing it. So this is not like 
a intense project. It's definitely one you can do quickly and have some fun with and get it done quick. So now what we need to do is pin these together. So I'm just gonna start by flipping this right sides together and then I'm gonna turn it because I always like to work with my uh, work that I'm turning up top. So whenever I'm pressing with right sides together, it's really easy to see with this one because we have clear light and dark sides. What I do is I line up my seams so that way they are really just right on top of each other, that that seam is, is right on top of one another. And then I always pin on the right side of the seam allowance. There's a reason for that. What you do is you're gonna sew down here and then you're gonna stop with your needle down in the first half of the seam allowance and only then pull this pin out. Because when that needle's down in the other half, it kinda acts like a pin so that way you, it doesn't get off when you're sewing and everything stays in place really well. The other thing you wanna do is make sure that you're pinning right in the seam allowance. I've seen people pin in all manner of places. I've seen people do this, which is, you know, holds it together, but it's not pinned where we're going to be sewing. So there can be a lot of movement there. Um, I've seen people like just pin like, like this also not going to help you much. You want to pin where you're going to be sewing so that way it stays in place where you're going to be sewing and where those joins are going to be so you can have really great results. Now for this one, we're only gonna do one side at a time. So I'm just gonna start flipping that right sides together. And I only pin where the seam is. That way I can, well one, use my entire pack of pins and I don't have to stop. I can do all of these all in one uh, sew through by chain piecing. And two, you know, everything should be exactly the size it should be. As long as you've cut well and you have, um, pressed well, everything should be exactly the size it needs to be. You can see here that my uh, fabrics there, they're coming together right at the end. And so I really don't need to pin anywhere else. I can just stitch down here, pull my pin out, stitch the rest of the way down, and everything should fit together just fine. If it isn't, then something went wrong for you at some point. Again, check to make sure you've cut everything correctly. You didn't have ruler slips. You want to make sure you have an accurate quarter and seam. And you also want to make sure that you pressed correctly because if you press wrong, sometimes you can eat up a little bit of your fabric and it's not going to fit together the way you want it to. All right, so we're still using that quarter inch seam. I'm just going to go ahead and get everything lined up and start sewing. One thing I do make sure is that my uh, seam here doesn't get pushed the wrong way when it goes over uh, this part of my sewing machine where it goes over that bobbin and throat plate. So just make sure that's nice and flat. And what I like to do here is just let it go again till that needle is down in the first half of that seam allowance. Then I can safely pull my pin and know that everything's gonna stay right where I want it to. Now what I do is I take my corners here and I'm just gonna line those up and put my finger on top of them. And that way I don't have to pin in the corner, I can skip that. Once I get where I can't hang on to that anymore, I just move my finger to the side. And that way I can guide it and get a good quarter of seam all the way down. So now I'm just gonna chain piece and do the other one I've gotta do here too. What I would do when I did the entire quilt is I did one entire section of units and then I chain piece the entire next section of units and that way I was able to get through it again super quick. I'm gonna stop and press these open before I sew any more. So this first part, I can just slide my iron down, but then I wanna lift when I get to that seam. So that way I'm not, again, pressing any of those seams where I don't want them to go. Once I've got the whole seam from the back side, I can go ahead and flip and do it from the other side. We got a really great join there that got lined up really well. And one thing I'd like to do once I have an entire unit together here is give it a little spritz with my spray mister. And that way I don't have to use steam in my iron and potentially ruin it it and have it spit on me and I can get a really really flat join so that way when I do some ruler work on this later I'm able to get some really great results and I'm able to sew right into those corners and do the same thing on our other strapeze unit and then we've got a little bit left to sew to this one Now I'm not gonna use my spray mister just yet. I'm gonna wait till I have my whole uh, quarter together, my whole unit, and then I will do the spraying then. For now, I'm just gonna flip those right sides together again, get my seams lined up, pin and sew.
All right, now that I've got everything together, I'm gonna go ahead and give it that spritz with the spray mister. I really love that because it doesn't have any little water droplets that can sometimes uh, be hard to dry and make your fabric look funny, especially when you've got white here that is not always a good situation. But you can see we've got some really great joins. Those points are coming together exactly where we want them to. And everything is super flat, so I'm gonna be able to do some great things when I get to the quilting stage. All right, so I've got my strip piece unit that has three sections to it, and my strip piece unit that has two sections to it. So I've got all my units together, ready to go. We have one last corner that is just going to be a plain piece from your fabrics, from your fat quarters. And at this point, we're just sewing together a a, a, a four patch and it's super simple. This one you've got no seams to match to so we can just put that right sides together. I don't even pin this one. I just sew it from top to bottom. Again, you've trimmed everything to size as long as you've sewed correctly, you should have no problems there. This one I am gonna pin together right here because I do have a seam there and it would be really visible if it was off. So that's just the same process where you're just gonna line those seams up on top of each other and pin. I'm gonna press these seams open as well. Again, making sure that I'm really lifting and pressing whenever I'm coming to a seam, as I don't wanna mess it up at this point because we've taken a lot of care and we're in home stretch here. So make sure you're referring to your pattern diagram because it will show you the direction that all these pieces need to go. But essentially everything kind of points in the same way. You've got a big square, a medium square, and a small square, and then everything else is going diagonal along the same direction there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pin these together. When I flip them right sides together, again, I won't have anything to match on this side because that's just one big square. I will have a seam to match here and here though, so I'm gonna make sure to pin in those two locations. So at this point, you wanna take a lot of care, really do a lot of lifting and pressing when you're pressing those seams open, because we have a lot of seams here that we could accidentally press going in a way we don't want them to go. So I really take my time going across that seam, and then when I'm done, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and press from the right side again. Then I'm gonna take my trusty spray mister, give it a good mist over the whole block, and then what I do is I will start in those middle seams and really just get that good, and then I kinda of work my way up over and then down. It might not be super obvious on camera, but this just got a whole lot flatter and it's gonna make it so much easier to sew together. Now, this is just such a super simple, super easy block. It goes so fast. I got the whole top together in less than a week um, and it's a good stash buster, but I don't, I totally recommend going with a single fabric for your background that is just gonna make everything pop. These fabrics are just so saturated, neon in some areas. And so having that nice plain white background is gonna help make them just stand out. Like the white on my sleeves makes the citron in the sweater pop. And so you want that in your background fabric as well. Um, again, we have patterns for this over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. It's called Ladies Chain. And then you also can get fabric and kits while supplies last. Um, the last couple months we've been selling out fairly quickly uh, of these. So I would not wait if this is something that you like. The best way to make sure that you get fabric fabric, if you like these videos that we've been putting out with Stash and with Stephanie and the fabrics in them, is to join our club. Stash and with Stephanie, we send out 10 fat quarters for $29.99 a month plus shipping. You get a free pattern every month that's been inspired by the fabric. And then you also get first dibs on getting additional fabric so you have enough to make the project that we come up with or just whatever you want to make your own project as well. You get exclusive discounts on that and you get access to all of our Stash with Stephanie patterns that we've put out that are currently available as PDFs on our website and you get those for free. And so it's a $240 value. Uh, it's gonna go up with this one. It's gonna be a $252 value after this month. And then you also get a discount on my book, Fat Quarter Workshop, which has some of our most popular patterns that are no longer available on the website, plus two exclusive Fat Quarter friendly patterns. And so it's a great deal. 
You can really boost that stash. Our fat quarter prices are, are much less than the industry average uh, because we know that you're gonna be coming back month after month, and so we're gonna give you a deal for that. So check it out over at shop.quiltanatomist.com. We only allow a certain amount of new subscribers every month because we wanna make sure we have enough fabric, not just to send out to everyone, but also so that everybody can get enough to make their quilt. So we have been cutting it off the last couple of months. So again, don't wait. If you see this and you like it and you've been watching the videos and you want to be a part of that, you know, you might end up on a wait list if you, if you wait too long. So make sure you go check that out. Thanks so much for following along and until next week, happy quilting. I think I just added laughter to the track somehow.